So resources in, in, in terms of materials and such. So we have the uh, information about the codes. So as I mentioned, the EcoRoof qualifies for stormwater management credit. If you're doing a project and you trigger our requirement for stormwater management, you can achieve uh, that uh, meeting that requirement by using an eco roof uh, associated with your roof drainage. If you have pavement, it doesn't apply. Uh, as of the last count, we had 23, well, as of this particular information, uh, 2007. So from 1999 to 2005, we had 23 buildings that got the stormwater credit. There were probably hundreds of buildings that were constructed, but 23 applied for and got the credit for stormwater using an eco roof. And then from 2005 to 2007, we had 27 apply. So it's becoming more uh, popular uh, in the sense I'm sure people are finding and engineers are finding that not only can they either, uh, they can get that credit, but they can reduce the volume of flow, which then potentially reduces some of what they have to do beyond that roof uh, in terms of meeting stormwater requirements. Now, so, when you say you get uh, credit, does that reduce your SDCs? Is that no, it doesn't about? apply to SDCs. It's the credit. It's the engineering calculations. So the engineers. Smaller pipes, that kind of thing, you mean? Uh, yes, yeah, smaller pipes, or you don't have to use this kind of treatment system versus this kind of treatment system. For instance, uh, in talking to some developers recently, they're doing projects that it's 100% lot line to lot line building. There is no landscape space on the site. And the old fashioned way of doing it is these big giant tanks and vaults under the, under the basement or in the basement and things like that. And we, we promote using vegetated management approaches in the city. So we have a stormwater planter, so they're looking at the planter, but they don't have enough room to do planters in their courtyard. They don't have enough physical space to manage the water as it's required to be managed. So if they augment that by putting eco-roofs on the building, they will reduce that flow. And they, don't, they just take that calculation, that, that square footage, they take it off their calculation. So if you normally have to have a de detention pond, you either have to have a smaller one or one, not one at all. Yes, potentially, right. Yeah. And then we have uh, the Zoning code 33.510, which is the floor area ratio bonus, that's the FAR, and ECOWOOS were put into that in 2001. <coughs> um, we might have one or two more since this was done, but you can see we've had 260,000 square feet of ECOWOOF installed uh, to meet this requirement. And you can see there's the numbers of how much you get for how much uh, ECOWOOF you put in. But the added value so far is 600,000 square feet. So this is at South Waterfront and other places. So if you have a chance, ask a developer how much uh, prior to the current downturn in the economy, uh, how much a square foot of uh, developed space is worth. And uh, some people have said it's worth, you know, like some of the condos and things are 300, 400, $500 a square foot. So multiply that by 600,000 and you get an idea how well, that's worked for those developers who found it to be beneficial. Uh, we have a green building policy, and I already talked about that with regard to city buildings. So we will put eco roofs on city buildings where it's practical. Uh, we have the grants, which Alice mentioned to you earlier. We have the we still have the uh, Office of Sustainable Development Green Investment Fund, so that includes uh, eco roofs. So if you're interested, if you have projects and you're interested in that grant information. Uh, we can tell you who to call about that. And then we have our watershed stewardship program grants, which we've had uh, every year. And those are kind of for smaller projects, but that's through BES as well. And this is the Clean River Reward. So right now, if you put an eco roof on a building, you will get a reduction in your fee of $1,447 if your building's an acre in size. And for that information, there's the number there. And then we do have technical assistance, which we're hoping this is going to assist you to have these uh, seminars. We also do tours. We take people to different projects. We also monitor not only the stormwater, but we try to monitor the vegetation, the irrigation, the materials, and things like that. And it's not only for us to help share that with you so that we can get more eco but because it's the city policy to put eco on our own buildings, 
it is beneficial for us to learn more and more about what really works and how we would apply it to uh, our own structures. So it, it just makes sense for us to continue to learn more about this issue. And, uh, oh, there's the OSD hotline. So if you wanted to call that about their Green Investment Fund grants, you, they would tell you where to go. And then Peter Drake uh, is here with us, and he's going to talk, I don't know, about today or tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, but next week. Uh, and so he's very helpful. He's with the uh, Bureau of Development Services. And I think this is the person in terms of FAR. I, didn't, I wasn't able to get a hold of her, but if you wanted to call zoning, they could tell you more about is is it still Kara Elizabeth? It's the Bureau of Development Services. Other. Okay, and then uh, just something about uh, I'm almost done here for this portion. Uh, just to give you an idea of how many how many acres of eco roofs we have in the city, or not eco roofs, we have this we have twelve thousand five hundred acres of roofing in the city of Portland right now. That's residential and everything that's out there. Twelve thousand five hundred acres. That's equivalent. Uh, well, that's quite a large area. With the development that occurs in the future decades, uh, we have space or the potential of another ten thousand acres of roofing in the city. So when you look at that and you start saying, okay, well, how much does an eco roof cost or whatever, you, however you want to do it. And I just use some numbers that, so these are my numbers. This isn't from some industry, but I just did a quick calculation and I came up with $4 billion in added eco roof, added industry. So it's not the roofing industry. It's the added portion to roofing that would be associated with this in whatever amount of time it took to do 10,000 acres. So it could be 50 years or whatever, whatever it takes. And then there is a certain amount of maintenance with these. And so I used a very conservative number and that's about $10 million per year of added jobs. So just to give you an idea of how somebody might look at it. This is my garage. That's my, oh, this is my grandson. You can't see him here. Anyway, so I've become a grandfather. This is a tulip that uh, and we'll talk about lots of the plant things uh, next week. And then uh, at this part, I'm going to stop and we're going to take a break. So any questions before we take a break? Uh, yeah. Uh, when you did the um, cost analysis, did you um, factor in the increased FARs and things like that? We did not include FAR at all. Okay, so because there is another, we didn't include FAR and we did not include amenity value, so we didn't get into that real estate kind of area. So there's a lot of money there that is not counted as it relates to those projects that actually can use that. Right. Yeah. Did you just do the cost analysis for that one type of building, or was there just that a one warehouse type of somewhere? And I, you know, then yeah, we, obviously they're going to be different. Right. Depending we, on we only did the analysis for that one type of building because it started getting crazy. So we just had to finally say, okay, let's just pick one building to start. Yeah. On the retention studies, were um, any of the when did, do they immediately start those studies? My 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 question is regarding plant establishment. You know, you know, what's the retention effect once the plants are established versus when are they starting to grow? You know what I mean by like the more root mass I have in the soil, am I gaining more holding capacity? Um, uh, we haven't done that kind of study to be able to give you an answer to that question, but you could surmise that as in Hamilton, each year the retention was getting better that as the, as the plants <coughs> and the system matured that that might be the answer, but we didn't actually specifically study that, so I can't tell you. Yeah. It seems like the retention would increase as the soil depth increases and as the plants mature. I mean, just logically. It seems that way, it does it? Yeah. Um, on all the studies, is eco roofs only roofs with soil profiles less than six inches? Are you looking at vegetated? roofs that are thicker? For what we're doing with regard to this seminar series, we are talking of generally six inches or less. 
It doesn't mean we're saying don't use eight inches. It just means that relative to a lot of issues that we're going to share with you and, uh, and especially the structural question associated with, uh, with buildings that the six inches or less, we, you know, we're really interested. I mean, you know, a lot of designers are doing things where they're, they're looking at the garden side of things. But we're hoping that, you know, Fred Myers and Costco and everybody out, you know, lots of these roofs that are just out and about in the middle of nowhere, just do an eco roof and maybe pay more attention to habitat associated with that eco roof. So, uh, so anyway, so, you know, that's kind of where we're trying to just sort of have the framework for this, this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Is the added weight of the echo roof significant enough to affect the structural requirements of the building? It can be quite a bit in some cases. We'll talk about that after break. Right. We're going to get into that in the design part and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll Can you comment on the study that came out of King County that says that four inches is the most efficient section for stormwater management? Yes, I can comment. When anybody, including myself, seems to imply that there's a conclusion regarding eco roofs, uh, I try to go, well, but what about that other one that does such and such? So I think it's a little early to come to conclusions, but I think you could say that it appears that this is what's happening. But um, so I would just say that. I'd say it appears, though, that we have said in our stormwater management manual that we want at least four inches. Now, if six or eight inches doesn't give you much more stormwater management, we don't have any documentation to prove that. If somebody else can prove it, that's always great as it relates to their study. But it's, it does seem a little bit like something's different there because, I mean, you, you just, there are so many unknowns as to what's happening on that roof or those roofs, whether they're ours or, or somebody. What was it? I was on a roof the other day and, oh, I was on this roof. Yeah, I was on this roof two days ago. And uh, the maintenance person had been using uh, the water to do something. The hose was hooked up, and they left the water on. So we have monitoring equipment up here. So I have to let our monitoring guy know that on October 20th, you have to delete that data because there's going to be flow associated with this, this, uh, the maintenance person leaving the water on. They weren't watering the roof. They had the hose, and they were squirting off some mechanical equipment up there. So on these projects unless they you know anyway there's just a lot to learn a lot of a lot of variables and things like that but four inches seems like it's pretty good yeah. yes i was wondering back to that bioaccumulator question that i asked before has anything been done with plants that actually um, contain some of the pollutants the metals and other things and secondary to that is has slag been used here, and does slag, in fact, have a lot of the pollutants that we wouldn't want to um, use as a growing medium? So the answer to your first question is no. Uh, did you all hear her question? Was we have not studied what what plants specifically do as it relates to the different uh, pollutants or constituents within the soil or the rain. We don't. We haven't studied that specifically. Uh, yeah, we might, hopefully. Yeah, or we, or we might work with uh, one of the universities. And, and slag are, yeah. or any, uh, I don't know if anybody's used slag, but our caution is that uh, relative to these uh, soil materials, so just keep an eye on it. I know in Illinois they've done some research on different materials that they thought, oh, this might be a really good material to put in an eco roof soil because it's so readily available and it just had characteristic that, characteristics that they thought would would be beneficial in an eco roof soil, and then they tested it, and it was uh, it was bad. There was something in it that was uh, leaching out, and it was pretty bad. And they said, "Okay, don't use this stuff." It was some kind of glass byproduct, or some something. Yeah. So so there's a lot of byproducts. Just we need to be careful and 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 uh, ask those questions. So I think uh, one last question, and then we need to take a break, and we can we'll, we're going to be here all day and stuff. So. System? Uh, the grant funds are f no, they're there for eco roofs. We do have money f in our budget, a certain amount anyway, for monitoring. Uh, so other grant funds would be possibly available. If we wanted to, if we wanted to monitor the water of the roof, uh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe the stewardship grant or something. I'm not sure. 
how to answer. He was asking if the grant funds were going to be available for monitoring an eco roof. And currently, the grant funds that we're talking about, the $5 a square foot, is for building eco roofs, pretty much. Okay, so thank you, and let's take a break, and then Dave's going to start on design when we get back. So we'll start up at about half past or 10.35.